we, we had a meeting at our golf course this morning talking about lights. Out. So we were outside this morning on our facility. What's the forecast? Broke my umbrella. It was. Start we start Friday. Mid 60s. Mid 60s. Yeah, it'll, it it should warm up through the week. I'm sure, it's gonna rain. Right? It's been every day for six weeks. Probably. <laughs> this has been incredible, hasn't it? You got some good mutters. Uh, I think so. We'll, we'll practice in the rain on occasion, so I think we'll be ready. Emily's off to a great start, right? She is. So yeah. Where is she elevated for a game? Um. <clears throat> Well, over the last calendar year, as I think about Emily Hoffman, she she absolutely has elevated her game. I think it has, with her, the, the skills have always been there. I think she's just simply handling mistakes better than she did, honestly. Yeah. Um, she's she's putting it behind her faster than she did as a freshman, as she, than she did as a junior golfer. Right. And that's that's just simply the maturation of a golfer. Right. They, they all mature at different rates. She's getting better at, at that one area. Yeah. Was that the it, one thing maybe holding her back a little bit? She yeah. sulk her pout and it cost her another hole or two? Yeah. yeah. At times she, she would, uh, everybody loses confidence when they make a mistake. Right. And, and she was just losing too much at times. So <clears throat> there's, there's tricks to the trade. You got to be able to put those mistakes behind you quickly and, right. and move on. How did winning the Western AM really, uh, help her confidence coach and, I don't know, maybe prove that, that she can win and, and be at the highest level of women's golf? I think that was big for her. It, it wasn't a surprise that she's that caliber of a golfer. And, to, and then once you actually do it, that's your question. Once you actually do it, I think you believe in yourself that much more. You, you now realize I'm among the best in, at the collegiate level, certainly. And it, really can't do anything but boost your confidence. And I think that's done that for her. She And she had a great summer in general. She won the Western, third at the Trans Miss, top 10 at the Canadian Am, and then Sweet 16 at the Women's US Am. She moved up 100 spots in the World Am rankings over the past 15 months. Wow. That's incredible. It was a huge jump. Yeah. You got a Sophia going, you got to make up, you got a younger team. We do. So, is Emily and other people the ones you're relying on as leaders? And how important is leadership in such an individual skill sport? It's important. I think any team, it, it's very important that you have someone, a voice, always, uh, to help direct people to, to do what they need to do. Losing Sophia was, that's a huge loss. First team All American. That, that's rare that you lose a first team All-American. So replacing her doesn't come from one person. It comes from the other five people. Luckily, we've got a good freshman class in Haley and Sarah. They offset her incrementally. And then Caitlin, Emily, Agat, and Greta need to also bring their A game essentially every time we tee it up. So that's how you offset a first team All-American is you get all five of your other players uh, getting incrementally better with their own games. Can you describe the games of uh, Haley and Sarah, the two freshmen? Ha Haley has good length off the tee, and she's got a terrific wedge game. And that served her well at the U.S. Open. She made the cut at the U.S. Open this summer, right. where a prerequisite is driving the golf ball. And then it's it's nice that she has good wedge play, great temperament, competitor. Sarah, great driver of the ball, ball striker in general. Sarah is mechanically very good. Great driver, great iron player. We're working right now to improve uh, putting, chipping, bunker play. The recruitment of them. How did you with Haley, it was pretty much everybody. Yeah. It, it came down to Texas A&M was in there because she grew up right there in their backyard. Right. Duke was in there. Houston, because of their location. Uh, TCU was in there. Oklahoma State. She, she 
was contacted by everybody. Yeah. The California schools contacted her, but she let them know early on she wasn't going to California. Uh, the last three were Texas A&M, Duke, and Texas. Okay. Sure. Sarah was, again, she was, she was highly ranked European, so she con was contacted by everybody. Mm -hmm. When she visited, it came down to Florida and Texas. And those, she had uh, kind of cut her list down to two because she was going to make two visits, and she settled on us two. And fortunately for us, she she right. chose us. What about her background? How long she played golf? She, it's an interesting situation. Czech. She's from the Czech Republic. Right. She's from Prague, which isn't necessarily a golf mecca. And <laughs> not not a lot of golfers coming out of the Czech Republic. She's our first. Um, so it's. She's extraordinary because they don't have everything that we have here in terms of golf courses, instruction, facilities, weather is a hindrance there. So everything she does or has done, in my estimation, has been extraordinary. Yeah. She, oh, got, she, she got a lot right here, you know. She's got a, a strong desire, a lot of will. And just she's one of those people that, yeah. that will be successful. How long has she been playing golf? Uh, I think she picked it up when she was eight, nine yeah. years old. Had you uh, did, did Greta recruit her for you from Germany? No, there's you know we start just like we do with anybody. We there's rankings, worldwide rankings, right. junior rankings. We start there, and you can identify yeah. at least a cohort of people in that particular class and how long did you recruit? for about a year and a half okay. and you know initially when you reach out they're getting inundated so much by right. letters that they kind of right. they may not respond back right. for a while because they're just they can't keep up with all the emails how was she as far as communication and interaction was she pretty constant initially it was yeah. <laughs> it was the uh, stiff arm, but we, you know, you, you persist and you keep trying to reach out and yeah. eventually we, we connected with her and brought her for a visit and she loved it. And yeah. Anything that appealed to the your coaching? Was it Sophia here? Was it something about Florida she didn't like? What was kind of went into her I, well. She loved Austin, Texas when she came. She loved our facilities. I, I can't say it was me. <laughs> she, I think she was enthralled with the city of Austin. Yeah. And coming from Prague, which is a great city, right. I think she felt like this, this is going to be my home. Austin, Austin's a better place for me. She grew up speaking English. Everything. She did. Great. Yeah. yeah. Right. Great English. What about the, the field you have here at the Betsy Rose? It's strong. Several good teams coming in. Alabama, who I, I think is the number one team in the country currently, based on just a couple of events that we've played. Florida's coming. Kent State's a really good team. Kent State done anything on the national level? I saw their ring. They've gotten to the final eight the past two years, I think. Yeah. Coach, how uh, you guys are defending champs of, of this tournament? It's, uh, how prestigious is this? And as you just mentioned, it's a strong field. Let's um, talk about how, don't want to preface to talk about, but just trying to win this thing again with such a strong field, see where you guys are at here in the fall and what you can do um, looking forward in the future. You always want to represent on your home golf course, certainly at your home event. And, and the goal is always to win. We'll go through our routines and our rituals that we always do. With, with the end goal being to win the golf tournament. And it's, I wouldn't say it's necessarily a lot different from other tournaments. You're just trying to win a tournament. This one happens to be our own, happens to be a, amongst a good field. A lot of our, our families and parents will be in. So there's a desire to play well in front of your, your, your people. Um, it, it's it's nice if if you can get that win, but it's uh, it's it's just another tournament for us where we're just trying to position ourselves and and do the things that we can control to to give ourselves that chance. I think it's alumni weekend, so your current team gets to see a lot of great 
<laughs> legends that came here. Right. Coach Weiss always gets a chance to come out as well. How important is it that they get the support but also learn from the past legends that, that came through here? I think that's uh, a big deal. I think it's a, it's a nice sisterhood that our golf program has from the players back in Coach Weiss's day to you know, from Coach Weiss to our current players, there, there's a bond there amongst the alums and the current players, and it will always be there. And I think that's, they, my current players probably don't realize that right now, but they will when they're out of college and they're connecting with, with the alums. But I think it's a really important part of our program. And as you uh, mentioned, we may, we may not get to see the current women's <laughs> amateur champion here, but what would be the significance to have Kristen Gilman here, the reigning United States champion, um, to, to see her and, uh, you know, for the fans to come out, young ones, golf fans alike, to see someone of her caliber. Not having women's professional golf in Austin, I would say this is the closest that we're going to come to that. And she's certainly one of those people. She's in college now, but she's got a professional game. There's no question it, about it. And you alluded to it. She may be here. She, she started second stage of Q school today. And she, that goes through Thursday. Uh, I don't know what their plan is. If she's successful, she, she may have to stay over there for third stage. If, she, if she's not, perhaps she comes and plays. I, I'm not sure. Um, that'd be a lot of, a lot of golf. If she, I hope she comes. I think that would be great for, for Austin. Uh, the Austin golf community and her family being from Austin, I think it would be great. It would enhance our golf tournament, certainly. I hope she's here, but we'll, we'll see. So she's at Alabama? She's at Alabama. Two-time U.S. amateur champion, reigning U.S. amateur champion. Right. And the recruitment of her. <laughs> she was committed when I started. And she had been committed for probably at least a year. In, in some sports, you might still continue to recruit that person. In golf, we don't. Right. We, we respect that decision, and it's very hands-off. Right. I respected that decision. I, I wished her well. I knew at that moment, man, this, <laughs> this person's great, and she's yeah. leaving Austin. So it was, there was a bit of pain yeah. for me. Right. But. N not much I could do there, yeah. and she's made, had a great career at, at Alabama right. and is good person. What's her pro website? Hi. Mm -hmm. She's really, really good. As far as Kate, you know, she had such a great year last year, Player of the Year, and Arnold Palmer Cup winning team. And what your, where's her game now? What are your expectations of her this year? Very, very similar. I, I think she's just maintaining that level of play that she was on last year. Caitlin is all about consistency. She, on any given day, she's going to get the most out of her game. If it's 68, she's going to shoot 68. If it's 73, she's going to shoot 73. She doesn't generally let it slip. She doesn't leave a lot out there from foolish mistakes. She, she doesn't beat herself, as I like to say. And uh, what's the next level for her? What I would say um, continue to do what you're doing. She's going to compete in some of the larger events in, in the coming summer, coming year, U.S. amateur, um, perhaps some professional events to get her feet wet. I would say that it's just experience playing in, in, and competing in the very biggest events around the world. British Am, she'll play in this summer. That's, that's all that's in front of her. She's very capable. Right. And it's just about do you believe in what you do? And until you get out there and you compete against yeah. the strongest fields in the world, right. it's hard to truly believe in yourself. Right. That's, that's what's in front of her, and she will. NCAAs and coming back, uh, you got her 12th and you know, best finish in 13 years. But I know it's, you got higher goals. So where's, what's the mentality of this team? 
Mississippi has gone but on top of that. Our goal is to win the national championship, and we're, we're capable of doing that. I've got a team that, that is capable of, of winning golf tournaments, winning that particular golf tournament. But that, a lot of things have to go your way. You have to be healthy. You have to be peaking at the right moment. Mm -hmm. And you have to catch some breaks the week of. I don't think anybody ever wins tournaments unless they caught a break or two. I can remember, remember in 2012 when we won on the men's side, we, we had extraordinary things happen that year and barely won that golf tournament. Yeah. We did win, but it, there were certain things that happened that were very fortunate for us. Yeah, a couple years later, you know, Coach Fields was in position again, and then Bo goes down with that injury. Yeah. Is this team hungry like that? Is it driven? Has he got that next gear? That That's what I really like about this team. They bring a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of positive energy. The team chemistry is fantastic. And they believe. I, I think they believe in themselves. They believe that we can win. It's, uh, it's a nice... Uh, group of young women that I've got. Where's the national championship? It's in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Next year. At the Blessings. Is Posse still there? She is. Okay.